Welcome back. And a quick check on what's happening with cryptocurrencies right now. And we saw Bitcoin and Ether plunging to their lowest level since July before bouncing back in the overnight session, both cryptocurrencies are now about over 40% off their record highs, BTC, at around 36,000 USD right now. Let's go live to Dave Chapman. He's the executive director at BC Technology Group, joining us out of Hong Kong for some insights, some analysis on what happens next in this highly volatile market. Dave, what happened to Bitcoin and I guess cryptocurrencies broadly being digital gold? and a safe haven asset and a hedge against inflation. We're seeing BTC now down 50% from that all-time high in July. What's going on out there? Hey, Dan, thanks for having me on the show again. Um, I think there's uh, there's certainly a lot of uncertainty right now, and I, there's two main reasons for that. One, we have crypto market-specific events, such as regulation, the reshuffling of mining infrastructure in Kazakhstan and China. And then secondly, the usual uh, global macroeconomic and geopolitical factors, you know, COVID, uh, the situation in Ukraine, interest rate fears, and the result of the combination of those two is indeed uh, short-term heavy downward pressure on digital assets. Um, that said, digital assets are incredibly resilient, and I think there is room for optimism in the medium and long term given the structural fundamentals and overall sector growth. Um, I think that we will, however, in the short term, need to also keep an eye on policy in the United States. I think you would have seen yesterday, it was announced that the White House is preparing an executive order on crypto oversight and regulation, and we might see that as early as February. Until we know more details about this specific order, um, some investors are naturally quite skittish as to what this could mean uh, for one of crypto's biggest and most influential markets, and they're rebalancing their portfolios accordingly. Okay, you know, it's interesting because you're exactly right. The Biden administration now preparing that government-wide strategy for digital assets as soon as next month. So regulatory risk is also coming back into play here. But Dave, with regards to the price action that we've seen in Bitcoin, do you think this most recent sell-off is looking overdone or does Bitcoin perhaps have further to fall here, particularly as we come into this really critical week for global equities and, of course, the narrative that we're going to get from the U.S. Federal Reserve? Yeah, it, it, it's a, it is a good question, Dan, and it's a fair question. I, I actually personally remain super optimistic on crypto assets and the, the wider digital asset space, and I, I don't hold that view in isolation. Uh, last year, this space received more than $30 billion in investment through VC, uh, private equity, and in the public markets, and that's more than the amount invested in all previous years combined. And I think, you know, we do have to actually zoom out a little bit. Uh, Bitcoin has a textbook history of doing what it's doing right now. Uh, taking last year, for example, uh, first, we witnessed a rise to over $63,000 in April, which was already a 100% gain in only a few months, uh, followed by that drawdown by over 50% when Bitcoin was back under $30,000 in July. Uh, then in November of last year, we saw another all-time high of almost $70,000 and now back to half of, of what it is today with Bitcoin sitting at $36,000. So despite being only 13 years old, uh, Bitcoin cycles do have the tendency to repeat history. And a lot of investors are seeing where we're at right now as possibly the third cycle of decline before the next major bull run. Um, at OSL, we're admittedly seeing some veterans in this space that are scooping up Bitcoin at these levels, are well aware of what's likely to happen over the next 12 months. Okay, and I get your point as well, Dave, with regards to how times have changed. Uh, the ecosystem is far more sophisticated and institutional than what it was back in 2017, 2018. What you're basically alluding to from what I can gather is that fears of a crypto winter might be a little overblown here, but would you be taking the current level of Bitcoin as a buy signal? That's what I wanna know. And if so, <laughs> how much further do you think it has to run? Could we see Bitcoin actually topping out beyond current all-time highs? Uh, sure. I, I think the days of, of me making price predictions are probably behind me, Dan. Um, but, but, but I'll come back to price in a second. I think one of the major points that I'd like to really tease out is that whilst most of your viewers are fixated on the price of Bitcoin, I actually encourage everyone to actually consider other metrics to really gauge the health and traction of this space. So, for example, Bitcoin alone transacted more than $12 trillion last year, and that's a 400% year-on-year increase. Um, other metrics that I'd consider looking at is the continued number of traditional companies that are speaking, that speaking very favorably and are actually entering this market. Now, whether that's everyone's favorite brands like Tesla and Square or well-respected banks such as DBS and Standard Chartered, but, you know, I think that that's very telling. Um, I also think, you know, with respect to where, if you want a price prediction of whether this is the bottom, 
Um, I think we're, maybe we can go a little bit further, um, but I do think that you know, if you're looking for a, a prediction, Dan, uh, I'm I'm pretty confident that um, we'll see the total market cap of digital assets surpass five trillion dollars at some point this year. Okay. All right, Dave. Looking forward to the next conversation. We'll see if it rings true. That's Dave Chapman there from BC Technology Group. Always appreciate the chat, Dave. Thanks for joining us.